There was like a two week period where every day I went to law and crime and it was like, diddy, 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 diddy. So yeah. I do think you're, you've become a bit of an expert in what's happening well, with him. Well, you you know ahead. what's interesting about that? You say that we, we were into this diddy story before the raids. And so we were following all of these lawsuits that were happening since early, uh, late to 2023. And I did a literally a breakdown of one of the lawsuits, no sound, literally me on camera going through the lawsuit. I said, do you think there's going to be any interest in this? We put it had like a million views in a mm -hmm. week. People were so fascinated with trying to understand what exactly is going on here, what's being alleged. So there's a fascination here, and clearly people want answers as to what's going on. All right, so I'm not gonna say start at the beginning because we don't know, need to go back to birth. Sure. But can you start at the beginning of his most recent legal troubles and set the scene sure. for us, and then we'll just go through how they began to escalate. Right. So everybody knows that Sean Combs has been in the entertainment industry for decades. Uh, people have seen movies he's been in, music he's been a part of. Uh, he, he, he's a juggernaut. He's a juggernaut. There's no other way to explain it. He's a report, purported billionaire. Now, we know that he got into legal trouble back in the day. I mean, there was the infamous 1999 uh, nightclub shooting that he and Jennifer Lopez were involved with. He, significantly, I should tell you, he was brought up on tra uh, charges, gun possession, bribery. He wasn't charged with uh, attempted murder murder. Um, but he was brought up a woman got charges. shot in the face. Yes. A woman got shot in the face. She's actually recently come out and said she would have the bullet removed to further prove that he was the shooter. Uh, he was acquitted of those charges. He was infamously represented by Ben Braffman and Johnny Cochran back in the day. And little side note about that, by the way, Megan, I think it's really interesting. She says she would want the bullet removed because she feels that he wasn't charged properly. If he was acquitted of gun possession charges, I'm not really sure how you could then try him for attempted murder or, you know, in da reckless endangerment. If, you, if he was acquitted of the, having the gun, I don't know how you try him for shooting the gun, but that's a separate question. Stand, stand by, because we actually have her on camera. Yeah. Let's take a listen yeah, yeah. to her. Uh, Nat Natanya Rubin. If I, I'm willing to have a doctor remove a part of the nine millimeter bullet in my face so that they can use it as evidence if need be for this trial. And you it may are. Cost me my you life, would be willing to do that program, now? I'm willing to do it. Oh, my gosh. So what do they have to say to that? Oh, boy. Because she, Has she been claiming since the beginning that Diddy is the one who shot her in the face? She testified at trial that that was what happened. She said that she saw two muzzle flashes. So one allegedly held by Sean Combs, the one of the guns being held by Combs, and then another by this individual named Shine. Now, we know that Shine was actually convicted um, and he was sentenced to 10 years in prison. The reason we're having this conversation before we move on about we're talking so much about the 1999 nightclub shooting is it's referenced in one of the major lawsuits that Combs is facing. And it's being brought to the forefront. And, and there's this allegation that Combs confessed to one of the people that's suing him. Yeah, I was really part of the shooting and I had Shine take the fall for me. So that's why people are talking about it. Now, she actually settled a civil lawsuit with Sean Combs. I'm not exactly sure if she, by the way, not recommending she get the bullet removed, but even if she no. were to do that, what what evidentiary value that would have. Are they going to retry him? Uh, are they, no, they can't retry him on the charges he was acquitted of. Are they going to bring attempted murder charges? Is she going to be part of this new civil lawsuit? She's not going to file another lawsuit against him because they settled. So you put that to a side, not sure where that's going to go. We know that over the years, there have been allegations of violence. There's been East Coast, West Coast. Um, Sean Combs had actually pled guilty to a lesser charge regarding an assault of one of the people that he worked with. But then you really fast forward to November 2023, because that's when everything happened. We had a lawsuit filed by Diddy's ex-girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, Cassie. And it's bombshell. It alleges, when I say sexual assault and abuse, and sexual slavery and sex trafficking, it's not doing justice to what I read in that complaint. What she accuses him of is basically against her will, forcing her into these sexual situations that I can't, I'm not gonna repeat to you. And it's a bombshell lawsuit. She is suing him for everything. And then she settles with him the day after. Now, when I said to myself, I said, you know, that's not uncommon. Sometimes that happens. Um, do you really wanna go through a litigation? Do you wanna go through a full case like that? But the fact that it's settled the next day after such strong language in that lawsuit, and when they settled the lawsuit, she didn't say this, you know, this clears Diddy. He said this doesn't clear anything. It was just, we've, we've decided to resolve this amicably. As these raids have happened, I've always been of the opinion that she may be a key witness 
who is cooperating with law enforcement. Because yeah, of because for the record, you can there. sign a, yeah. a settlement agreement in a civil lawsuit uh, or an employment matter for that for that matter, and that doesn't preclude you from telling all to the feds. Absolutely. You can't. It's against the law. You can't sign some sort of uh, settlement agreement or an NDA that says you can't cooperate with law enforcement in an ongoing investigation. Um, so that's what started it. And the first, when we read the lawsuit and we saw the settlement, one of the reasons that celebrities would settle is because they don't want the floodgates to, well, actually, I should say one of the reasons they don't settle is they don't want the floodgates to come open. Well, he settles. And after that, we saw lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit against Sean Combs, sexual assault, rape, sex trafficking. And one of the most bombshell lawsuits is filed by his former producer named Rodney Little Rod Jones, where he claims that he was sexually abused and harassed by uh, Diddy, that he was forced into sex trafficking, forced to recruit sex workers. He alleged violence, uh, illegal gun possession, illegal narcotics possession. In one of the lawsuits, it was alleged that Diddy blew up rapper Kid Cudi's car. So he's facing all of these lawsuits. And then a few months ago, the raids happen. And you know, somebody who's been following the lawsuits religiously, I said, oh my gosh, they this is it. Like they, they're They've taken everything they've seen is true. They're now going to arrest him for sex trafficking. These uh, people who are suing are cooperating witnesses. But I wanted to caveat it because sometimes these raids can be just collecting information. It's collecting evidence. It's working to build a case. So the fact that Diddy wasn't arrested and hasn't been arrested doesn't mean that he won't be because sometimes these cases do take time and they take time to build. And I believe that behind the scenes, there are a number of people who have been issued subpoenas and, they're try and law enforcement and prosecutors are trying to corroborate the information they currently have. So I think that's probably the best place to explain what's currently happening. He's facing a number of lawsuits, and we're waiting to see if he will face uh, charges. But he's not been charged, and his sons have not been charged, even though they have been also brought up uh, in these allegations as well. Describe what the possible sex trafficking claim would be based on. So when we talk about sex trafficking, we're talking about harboring, recruiting, enticing individuals which for, for commercial sex. You are offering them something of value, whether it's job opportunities, whether it's gifts, whether it's money. Um, and you're doing this through fraud or coercion. And a big theme that we're seeing from these lawsuits is that Sean Diddy Combs used threats of violence, used actual violence, um, used dangling opportunities in front of people to force them into sexual situations that they did not consent to. Um, and there's recurring themes that we're seeing here. If people also were transported across state lines, that can be a big theme. You know, Rodney Jones says that he was forced to do all of these illegal activities on behalf of Diddy while he was being transported across uh, different states and the U.S. Virgin Islands. And so we see that potential sex trafficking charges could look like that. And I should also tell you, Megan, that in the federal code, if you are talking about sex trafficking of minors or recruiting people for prostitution who are underage, that tax on, that's other additional charges. And, and in one of the lawsuits, he's also been accused of operating a racketeering enterprise, which is a criminal enterprise. Um, now, it's interesting I say that because I think it was just yesterday that in the Rodney Jones lawsuit, the company defendants, so it's not just Combs who's been sued, but his companies were sued or affiliated companies were sued, they were dropped from the lawsuits. And I think that says something uh, about even though these allegations are, are quite compelling and, and quite in incredible to listen to, they are allegations at this point, and they're civil allegations. So we have to always be careful that it might look like Diddy did something, and he's accused of doing something, but right now he's innocent until proven guilty, and he hasn't been found liable in a court of law. Well, on that front, the, the best thing I've seen for Diddy so far since this all started breaking in November was this admonishment of the lawyer who mm. represents both Rodney Little Rod Jones and I think represented Cassie. He, he's yep. now had his hand really slapped in some very explicit language by, was it the bar or was it a judge? But they basically yep. said, you need to stop with the salacious allegations you're clearly going for PR here. And I've never seen anything like that in, in, a, yep. in a case. So tell us about that. His name is Tyrone Blackburn. 
and he represents several of the plaintiffs that are suing Diddy. He not only represents Rodney Jones, he represents Grace O'Markey, who is a woman that is accused and sued Christian Combs, uh, uh, Sean Combs' son of sexual assault. And it was a judge. It was a federal judge in New York who actually issued a uh, complaint to the grievance committee saying, when you're looking at what Tyrone Blackburn is doing, a reasonable inference can be that he deliberately files cases in federal court in order to gain media attention, to pressure plaintiffs to settle, to embarrass them. And I'm saying to myself, I, I haven't seen that. And I haven't seen Never. something like that in a long time. And you know, there was one thing that every one of the defendant attorney, defense attorneys who were representing Diddy and who were representing his son have, have come out and said, you know, obviously they say the allegations are fake, but the fact that they've spoken so out against Tyrone Blackburn is something that, again, I haven't seen. They've basically been accusing him of malpractice. And just yesterday, as I mentioned, one of the lawsuits, uh, they, Tyrone Blackburn dropped the claims against a number of the companies. And it, when he, the, I actually want to pull up the language um, because he basically said, I read everything that was in the, um, the oppo my opposing counsel's filings and I've decided that it's best to dismiss the cases, dismiss the claims. Wow. I, I, I was I was like, uh, oh, OK, I mean, that's interesting. That's an interesting thing to do. Being in debt is like sinking in quicksand. You're trapped. You feel helpless. And the harder you struggle, the deeper in debt you can get. Been there. If you are trapped in debt, let me throw you a lifeline. Done with debt. Done with debt has created a new strategy with one goal in mind to get you out of debt quickly and permanently. Done with Debt stands between you and your bill collectors. Then they negotiate a plan to end your debt permanently without bankruptcy and without loans. They can get you out of debt quickly and they can put more cash in your pocket monthly. But you do need to contact Done with Debt soon because some debt solutions expire. It's super easy to get started. Just go to donewithdebt.com and get a free consultation. What do you have to lose? Talk with one of their experts about a strategy that will end your debt faster and easier than you thought possible. Visit donewithdebt.com. That's donewithdebt.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.